Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Hey, well, you know, another sleepless night, so here we go. Figured I might as well talk about insomnia. So, you know, hit the thumbs up for me, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Helps to get the information out there to more of us, right? So the idea here is with your VA claim or claims that you have filed or you're anticipating to file, you have to think about all of the different things that you may have going on with you that are chronic in nature or have some sort of residual effects that you could tie back to your service or be linked to another service-connected condition. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about here uh, with regard to insomnia, uh, especially as the is kind of the example that I'll use. So ideally, when you're filing a claim, you're going to want to file for your service-connected conditions. Those service-connected conditions are really going to be the bedrock, the foundation of your entire VA compensation, we'll call it a journey. So that foundation of service-connected conditions, uh, I throw in here real quick some important pieces of it. What you need to have in order to have a successful claim, because let's be frank, who cares if it's not successful, right? You need to have a successful claim in order to uh, be fruitful with your actions, right? So the three things for a successful claim are time and service, Okay, active duty time, time and service, a diagnosed condition that's chronic or has residual effects, right? It's got to be an ongoing kind of issue. And third is a nexus, a link between that condition and your time and service. Now, there's been a lot of talk through the PACT Act, and, and a lot of the Vietnam folks prior to that already know about presumptive conditions, and that gets rid of the nexus piece for service-connected conditions. So barring the presumptives, that's what you need. The nexus, again, is that link between your time and service and that condition. Really what they're saying is, and they is the VA, show me that your condition manifested or is a result of your time and service. Now, if you're able to do that by whatever, you know, the ideal way would be is that you actually got diagnosed when you were in the military. Okay, That's, that's the easiest way to prove your nexus. Most of us don't do that, and then you end up getting out, and you know you have to get uh, nexus letters from your doctor, buddy statements, that type of stuff. You might have something in your records, which is important. So if you don't have your records, get those. So now you have this bedrock of service-connected conditions that you filed for. Now what you're going to have is the opportunity to think about any other conditions that start to result as a res as kind of a factor of your service-connected condition or as a result of your service-connected condition. So my example here that, that I'll give is, is for myself, right, just because that's easy. So I filed, so I was mortars, right? So mortars in, in the Marine Corps, and then I was also mortars in the Army National Guard and 81 millimeters, uh, which are humpable, right? Throw them, you know, pack and go, right? 35-pound barrel. Um, the, for those that know, right? And the base plate, you know, you got to strap it to the back of your, outside of your backpack. So here's you, here's your backpack, and then you got your base plate back there. So it's really pulling down more. So, and the only reason why I explain that is one, for those that don't know, now you know, but really when you are able to articulate or explain how things were when you were in the military with those, you know, like Atlas packs with those metal frames, that type of stuff. Um, how you had to carry your gear, how much gear you carried, how often you trained or how often you hiked uh, wherever you were. Um, and that's important when you're working with a doctor to write you a nexus letter regarding your condition. Okay. So for me, I got rated for my back at 10%, my lower back. Now, I was surprised. Now, this is before I knew anything. So, and, and I was surprised. I was surprised that it was 10%, as many people are. So, usually the range of motion rating schedule is pretty 
pretty stringent. So you really got to be messed up and really not mobile much to get any high rating on your range of motion. So it was frustrating. However, now I had my bedrock laid, right? I had my foundation for my back. I had other things too, but my back was in there. Over time, right, the radiculopathy starts to come into play. You got that numbness and tingling going down your legs. Um, I had some arthritis in there. I had um, those two things added on, right, as secondary conditions uh, to, my, to my lower back. So then the next thing was insomnia. Falling asleep wasn't an issue. It was staying asleep. So whether it's your back or your, your knees or whatever it is, if you have a combined rating for all of your ratings and none of those things are mental health because insomnia falls under the mental health rating schedule, if you have no mental health ratings, insomnia if you have any sort of you know pain that keeps you up, you have a hard time sleeping, um, maybe even uh, uh, if you have sleep apnea and the CPAP and all that stuff is causing issues and it makes it difficult to sleep, um, you know that could possibly be a way as well to get insomnia as a uh, secondary condition to an existing service-connected condition. Now. They're going to rate you on the severity of your symptoms, okay? It's on the mental health schedule because, let's face it, if you're not sleeping well, you're not functioning, you know, all cylinders aren't moving sometimes. So what happens is, is they'll rate you on that. I think I'm at uh, 30% for insomnia uh, as a secondary condition to the back. Uh, so that is a decent sized rating and again look i'm not a fan of trying to just chase high ratings wherever they are because who cares if it's not something you can actually file for who cares what that is file for what you can file for file for your conditions but make sure that you get rated at what you should be rated for for that condition in other words don't get shortchanged. don't get lowballed on your rating do your due diligence and do your homework with the schedule of ratings from the VA and read through it for your condition to know exactly what, what warrants what rating. Very important to go in prepared so you can get the right rating. So with that, I'll go ahead and conclude it there and uh, go inside and see if I can uh, finally fall asleep, get out of the shop here. Uh, so thanks again. I appreciate each and every one of you and remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong. Have a good one.